What's going on America? Very interesting fact. This is a business analysis video for you. I'm going to talk about during the great recession, we had 1.8 million businesses grow close and the great recession dragged on for about seven, eight years. This morning I had some more, someone tagged me in one of these V shaped recovery posts because there are more people putting in mortgage applications. And essentially I'm going to explain to you why I feel that that is happening. And I'm also going to give you some other numbers that really don't bode well for the overall economy because, you know, I understand a lot of people don't live and breathe these numbers like I do. Like I was easily able to destroy Trump's lies with facts internet facts, verifiable information, literally right after he lied to the American public. And after that, there was several uh, YouTubers and news publications was like, ah, these numbers are not exactly what they thought they were. They're, they're not what they were telling us. They, the numbers were, the books were cooked. Let's just put it this way. The books were cooked. And you know, one of the things is everyone who is telling me if there's going to be a V-shaped recovery does not have the benefit of being a business owner. Interesting how that keeps is all of these folks who sit on the sidelines and don't participate in the game of economics. It is really, really interesting. So this is what's happening with this V-shaped recovery update on Facebook. Hey, if this is the first time here, what I want you to do is to go below, and get the 30 days to 2,500 so you can begin working on your economics. How about that? And also get the Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success audiobook. All right, so let's get into this. And during the Great Recession, we had 1.8 million businesses closed. We had unemployment of 10%. We currently have unemployment of about 20%. And every day, we have businesses that are permanently closing. Let me go ahead and tell y'all how this whole thing started because I got tagged in this because of the mortgage applications. And let's talk about that behavior. A lot of people during this forbearance, not the forbearance, during the lockdown, found that living in a small cramped apartment really sucked monkey balls. It was just like, you go from the bedroom to the main area. Like, you know, I got a 5,000 square foot house. It has not been compromised or cramped. Me and my girlfriend, we've just been having, living the La Vida Loca. We've been all up in the bedroom. We've been going on the deck, drinking, watching the sunset. It's been very nice because we have a house. And a lot of people like, before I lose my job, I'm going to get me a house. And I think this has spurned a lot of people to get a house. And many people's like, hey, while I'm in a position to get a house, I'm gonna get me a house. That's one of the things that's pushing this because a lot of folks, because you gotta look at how Americans operate. We operate in the here and now. Forget the future. Ah, the future. Well, we ain't even worried about that. Like right now, my credit score is good. I can get a house. I'm getting me a house. I feel okay about my job. I'm gonna do it. And then this person also said, because you remember, I actually did a video talking about the ticking time, forbearance time bomb. Due to some new legislations, Fannie Mae has just added this option that they can move the payments to the back of the loan. But guess what? Because he said that there is no forbearance ticking time, time there is no forbearance ticking time bomb. Me, I'm, I'm going to verify you. I'm going to fact check you. So I go to the website and I see that this option doesn't start until July 1st, 2020. Wait a minute. So that means all of the people who were entered in forbearance before July 1st, 2020 entered forbearance under the old terms. And, you know, he's like, well, they're going to work with people. Really? Let's go back to the Great Recession. How many people apply for loan modification? Four to, four to five million? How many people actually got loan modification? 4,000. I have a feeling that the same thing 
is going to happen and people going to be like, but hey, but hey, but hey, Fannie Mae, but on your website, it said that you will, well, that's for people who filed July, after July 1st, 2020. I, once again, go ahead, fact check me. Go ahead and look up the loan modification programs of the Great Recession and what a disaster and what a burning house that was. I feel the same situation is going to happen because see, when people come at me, they don't feel that I'm just going to, oh, you're a nice Facebook person. I'm just going to take your word. No, I'm going to fact check you. And I fact checked him. And then he just kind of slid like, well, Fannie Mae is going to work with people. And I just let the conversation go because I could have brought up, you mean like they work with people during the loan modification process in, in the Great Recession? You mean like that? Like how many people got screwed? How many people went into foreclosure? Like that. So why is this 1.8 million businesses closing important? This is one of the factors that created the 10% unemployment. So there are various estimates and I looked it up this morning before I did this video. Right now, the latest estimate is 7.5 small businesses are going to close, which is 3.5 times higher than what happened during the Great Recession. And that's just an estimate. It could be less. It could be more because, uh, you know, I personally think as we go through this thing. Oh, I'm going to tell you a little funny story. I got a funny for you in a minute. Don't let me forget, America. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, so we're looking at 7.5, let's say, just go ahead and call it 8 million small businesses closing, which would literally be four times the small business closure of the Great Recession. That is very damning for the American economy. And then there's, you know, here's the funny, because the same person who tagged me, it was like, hey, I just heard from a buddy that the hotels and stuff in Vegas were at like 75%. Then my boy Jacob, who's a member of the Hustler Kung Fu Soon. I'm in Vegas, they ain't true, they ain't true. I've been doing here, there ain't no way that it's even close to where it used to be. And also, one of the things you got to realize is for Vegas to be at full capacity or 75% 75 of capacity, that means the airlines, which have literally parked 90% of their airline fleet, would also be back up to capacity. But see, once again, when, when they're, in there, they're saying all this stuff, they don't understand the knowledge that the hustling godfather knows. Like, seriously, there, there was an article uh, a YouTube video where these airlines, because parking a plane is not easy because when you park a plane for a prolonged period of time, it costs a lot of money in maintenance, maintenance that has to be done to bring that plane back into service. And this is one of the reasons that the airlines were flying empty planes and rotating them because it was going to be cheaper to keep them flying the, flying the planes than to park them. So, you know, for anyone that's talking about, you know, Disney, Las Vegas, you know, it's going to resume. That's not going to happen until airlines start resuming their flight schedules and get the people because there's only so many people who can go to because, you know, I've been hearing about, well, these planes are crowded. You know why they're crowded? Because they're not flying all of the flouts before the pandemic. At any given time, there used to be 20,000 planes in the air. 20,000 around the world. And that has come down to by 90%, 90%. So a lot of planes are being parked in the desert to prevent corrosion and stuff. And this is around the world that these planes are parked. So go ahead, Google, go to YouTube and watch these videos about these parked planes. It's very, very interesting. But once again, you know, I understand that people don't like bad news. I get that. People are not down for the bad news. People don't want to face the economic things. But with the forbearance thing, go ahead to the Fannie Mae website. You can see that they updated that. 
and it will actually say July 1st, 2020, which hasn't happened yet because it's June. So we got three weeks before people will be able to apply for that option in their forbearance application. So where, where does this leave us? I feel, you know, with the eight to 12 million, because, you know, it's, it's going to be millions of small businesses that have closed. There are millions of small businesses that have already closed. They have shut their doors. It's like, we're not going to play the economic game anymore. And what does this mean? First of all, it means that many, many people who were temporary laid off, that's going to go from a temporary layoff, it's going to go to a permanent layoff. And let's go ahead and say that Fannie Mae just says, hey, you know what? We like you. We're going to go ahead and let you add your mortgage payments to the back of your loan, but you don't have a job. What's going to happen? Foreclosure. Because, see, you know, I was like, this foreclosure crisis, because once again, you know, people don't believe I'm going to fact check them. I'm like, I ain't going, I'm just not going to take you for what you said because you, you, you have a nice Facebook profile. I, I'm just not. I'm, I'm going to fact check you, and good thing I did, because when I saw that, that you couldn't even begin to put that option into July 1st, 2020, it was a little interesting. So what this is going to do is keep our unemployment high. We may be at, because right now, you know, after the fake Trump invoking George Floyd, George is looking down at us, all these good numbers and stuff. Um, you know, unemployment is probably 20% unofficially because they don't want to say it. And factual unemployment is probably 27%, which is almost three times what the unemployment was during the Great Recession. So let's take these factors. Airlines are flying at 90% reduction rate. Vegas ain't Vegas anymore. Disney ain't Disney anymore. Millions of small businesses are closing. We're going to have high unemployment. This is a fantasy about a V-shaped recovery. It is a pure fantasy because when you look at the numbers and let's just take high unemployment, we're not going to have a V-shaped recovery with high unemployment. And there are many sources that are predicting high unemployment will be high into 2022. It is 2020. That's two years from now. And what we're looking at with these closure of the small businesses, high unemployment, the f looming foreclosure crisis. You see where I'm going? Those three things right there do not indicate a V-shaped recovery. Because see, and you know, I've had someone, you know, I was going to put some money on the book. Every time I put out a book, because I'm saying there ain't going to be no V-shaped recovery. And everybody wants to bet me, wants to get into stipulation A, stipulation B, stipulation C, stipulation D. Because they're afraid of losing their money because all of that noise that they're talking. And it's, it's just that it's noise because it's easy to say, hey, we're going to have a V-shaped recovery. But you put some money on it. Ah, like, I don't know about this, Glendon. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about this, man. Uh, you know, I ain't trying to lose my money, so I ain't going to bet you unless we put in stipulation A, B, C, D, E, C, E, F, G, you know, all the way to damn Z. These stipulations, because they, they don't believe what they're saying once we apply the pressure of risk. Because, see, anyone can have an opinion. Anyone can have an opinion, but once you apply risk in the form of a wager, uh, that opinion is it, not so solid anymore. It starts to go away. And, you know, it, it, it's crazy. But, you know, one of the good things I think that this will do, and this was mentioned in the conversation, and I think it's going to happen, is we're going to bring, bring manufacturing back to America. I feel that that is already happening. Many of these companies realize what happened in China and they're like, look, Lord, you know, we, we can't go through this again. And you got to look at the Chinese economy. The Chinese economy is having the second and the third wave. They're locking down providences. But China, like Germany, is in a better position because they make stuff. So what I hope happens 
is we have this era of bringing manufacturing back to America. This will create new companies. This will create new jobs. This will create new economic boom. But I don't think that that's going to be enough to employ the millions of people who have lost their jobs when these eight to 12 million businesses close. Once again, <clears throat> 2009 to about 2015, we had 1.8 million businesses close. And let's also talk about velocity. The 1.8 million businesses that closed, closed over time. We didn't have, bam, all right. There, I mean, these businesses are closing at the speed of light. The velocity is so vicious. You cannot tell me that's not like, well, we're going to have eight to 12 million businesses closed and we're going to have a whole millions of people still unemployed and we're going to just have this V-shaped recovery. We're going to have the cookies. We're going to have the punch. We're going to even have the ponies while all of these people out here suffering who that we used to depend on as participants in the economy. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Once again, go ahead, fact check me. And you know, like the dude who tried to fact check me on George Floyd, look, stop being so sensitive. We can't even have these conversations when you get so sensitive on the topic of race. Anytime I say something in that last video, I didn't really think that was racially, racially offensive to anyone talking about, you know, white people are having conversations about race with white people. I didn't think that was racially offensive. And some of you still got offended because you're too damn sensitive. Let's talk about what we as black folks need to do. White America, you can lead the room. What you need to do is get you some power because there was someone who was like trying to check me and I deleted his comment. See, this is what happens when you become a producer and you become a creator. You gain power. Cause see, you were trying to check me in the comment and I deleted your comment. So who checked who, boo? You got checked. Trying to check somebody with no power. Trying to check somebody with no money. Trying to check somebody with no economic reach. Trying to check somebody without the ability to force your agenda. Come on, man. Really? Really? So what we as black Americans need to do is start more businesses. What is that? It's a wrap. First you get the money, then you get the power. I think that's how it goes. And there are so many people who are not participating in the power grab game. Right now in Georgia, it's a voting day. I'm gonna go out and vote. This is where you need to vote. You need to vote for your local elections because that's where the power, those long, boring, PT, not PTA, but public service announcements where, you know, the guy with the, the, the neocon afro and Miss Becky and they're sitting there and they're talking about what they're going to, that's where public policy is shaped on the local level. And that's something that you can impact by knowing what's going on and voting. This whole I ain't going to vote. I'm just going to get here and post these long, long paragraph posts on Facebook, whining up. You ain't doing nothing if you're not voting, if you're not participating in the economy, you're not doing anything and you just talking. So we need to stop talking and we need to start doing. We need to create businesses, we need to create allegiances and alliances and create power groups like essentially it, it's real funny because I've noticed something that whenever I talk about business stuff on this channel because you know I'm in the YouTube mastermind and I have figured out who my audience is and it's not people who want to build businesses it's not whenever I do a how to do something XYZ business video it doesn't get the views like when I talk about George Floyd, when I talk about V shape economy, I've even noticed this with Erica Williams. She, she was doing tech week and her views were literally half or less than half. And she like, Hey, this is what you can do to get you some money in your pocket. This is what you can do. And 
it, it, it's weird. It's like people like drama and your hustling godfather's here to give you the drama. I'm going to give you the drama. But once again, we need more people to participate in the economic power grab. It don't matter if you white, it don't matter if you black, it don't matter if you trans, it don't matter if you're gay. If you have the audacity to go ahead and create a business and put your economic agenda out there, I sell cupcakes, I fix cars, I fix trucks, I cut grass, I wash cars. You're gonna make some money. And this money is gonna be, and also make sure you guys subscribe to Savage Finance because I'm breaking down the money game like I've never broken down the money game because once again, there were too many topics on this YouTube channel. And if you've noticed that I'm creating new topics on top of the old channel, and that seems to be working out really well. But subscribe to Savage Finance because I got one that's going to come. It's, you know, the editor didn't get it done today, so I'm gonna have to post it a little later than normal, but I'll probably be posting that around eight-ish or nine-ish o'clock tomorrow. But we gotta participate in the power game. And with all of these businesses closing, I can tell you the liquidation auctions are going to be thick with deals. And if you're in the position to pick up this, like men are on sale, women are on sale, cars are on sale, and 2021 houses will be on sale. Right now, commercial property is at fire sale prop prices. Right now, I would hate to be a commercial landlord that was leveraged. If you know my property was owned that outright, I could ride this out. I'm like, okay, this is a year we just ain't gonna make no money. Okay, fine, cool. And pay our property taxes, go to the golf course, go to the lake house, and life goes on. But if you're leveraged, these are scary, scary, scary times. I mean, the boogeyman is doing monkey double backflips all over commercial real estate. And that's another factor. Let's look at high unemployment, millions of businesses closing, commercial real estate in the toilet. I mean, in the, in the re residential real estate thing that's gonna come in 2021. I don't really see no V-shaped recovery. And all of these folks who, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why they trying to get me on their team like, Yay! We're gonna have a V-shaped recovery, man! We're gonna have a V-shaped recovery! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! It's gonna be all good. I don't operate on hope. I operate on facts. And the facts indicate that there will not be a V-shaped recovery. I don't care if you stamp your feet and spin around in circles and scream to the top of your lungs. That's not gonna change the facts. It's like gravity. If you walk off a cliff, you're not going to float up. You're going to go down hard, swiftly and fast. That's what's going to happen. So I want you people to understand that the number of businesses closing is not a good thing. And we've never had that many businesses close. I mean, literally, these businesses are going to close in 2020. During the Great Recession, the 1.8 businesses actually started closing from about 2007 to about 2016. It took years for that to happen, and now it's just like, bam, close, liquidation sales, bankruptcy. And this is going to go on throughout the rest of 2020. And, you know, it's going to be interesting with, with professional sports because... I feel that they're going to try to push college football and they're going to try to push the NFL, you know, NFL games. What's going to happen when your star players start getting sick? That's something because, you know, my team, University of Alabama, five players tested positive. Auburn players. I mean, literally just go ahead and Google it. You will see that all these colleges, all these players are testing positive. So, you know, fortunately, they're really young and hopefully none of these guys die or really get super sick. But what's going to happen you, you know, what's going to happen to the Kansas Chief, City Chiefs if Patrick Mahomes gets the coronavirus and he gets really sick? What's going to happen? So 
I feel that they're going to push through. You know, they're going to have people up in the stands with masks. And here is something that's really, really scary to think about. Let's say <clears throat> right now the death rates in New York are going down across the country. We're, we're having like weird hot spots and stuff. But let's say all this gets reignited in the fall and we go back down on lockdown. The economy is toast. The economy is garbage on that deal. But once again, if you're not playing the game, you don't know the game. It's like someone over there talk, who's never played football talking about, yeah, man, when they get hit. See, when you play football, and I played football, and I literally had a dude do a crack back block on me. And when we were watching the film, they kept, because I mean, he just, bam, just knocked me out the frame. And they kept rewinding it for the film. It, it's pretty funny now. At the time, it wasn't funny because he do just took me out. And I was just sitting there like, what the? That hit, I felt that in my bones. And see, unless you have a business, unless you're playing the game of business, unless you're currently playing the game of business, and you know, call me a fear monger if you want to. I don't even know why you watch me, man. You don't really know what you're talking about. You're just making assumptions. Like, that was so precious when I got tagged in that comment. And it's like, Vegas is at 75% capacity. And then my boy Jacob came in and said, uh, no, it ain't. Ain't even nowhere near close to where we used to be. It's way down. But once again, why are people trying to exist on hope? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a person that operates on hope. I'm a person that operates on facts. I'm a person that looks at the truth. So I don't really know what is to be gained by operating on hope. But I can tell you this, there is a silver lining. If you're positioned, let me be clear. If you are broke dick Danny, if you're one of these people that got laid off and you absolutely have no money, you have to go through, check out my video when I was poor. You can overcome this, but it's gonna take time. It's not gonna be, that's not gonna happen. It's gonna take time for you to get your affairs in order. But what I want you to do right now, if you want to, if you're in the position, cause you don't have no money, go ahead and get 30 days, 2,500, get the free course. Um, I want you to get how to make money for scratch. I'm going to have another webinar really soon. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. There's the old webinar and that links below. And I'm going to give you a little juice off a little juice, a little, little bit off the squeeze. Go ahead and get that. And we're going to rock and roll because one of the things I want you guys to understand is there is opportunity, but you have to put yourself in the position to win. That's the key. You have to put yourself in that position. It's just not going to happen because you want it to. You, you got to put yourself in the position. Like all these people who are, you know, filing mortgage applications and going, they're in the position to buy a house. They got good credit. They got a down payment. They're in the position to buy a house. And that's what you got to do is put yourself in the position to win. So that's all I've got for you. And go ahead and check out this other video that should be right here.